Local Ancillary Sales Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Berg, joined as always by Viv Hudson. Viv, we got a really special guest on today, don't we? Oh my goodness, really? We do? Who would that be? <laughs> well, Viv, I'm going to let you interview none other than myself, Michael Berg. I'll, oh I'll be I'll be your, your guest today, so I'm going to let you pepper me with some questions. And today we're going to be covering a program that is going to make you very little money, <laughs> but it is a very... <laughs> But it is a, still a very important program because it this is something that dovetails with some of the other programs that you might be pushing. And this is also a good door opener for certain types of clinics. And that is patient financing. Yes, patient financing. And it's one of those things we do get calls about upon occasion. So demand, from what I hear, has been increasing. So why is that, Mike? Well, the yeah, the demand has skyrocketed of late, Viv, and there's a few reasons. Number one is a lot of patients have high deductibles now. You see because of the increase in premiums, a lot of patients are, are going with five or $10,000 deductibles, which means that oftentimes they have large out-of-pocket expenses. And if they don't have the money to cover that, that money's, they got to find that money somewhere. And they don't have a lot of good options right now. Also, you see an explosion in the growth of cash-based services. I know we've talked about on this show, Viv, hormone replacement as an example, um, regenerative medicine, all the stem cells and A2M and PRP and all that stuff. That's all cash out of pocket for the patient. So again, that, that money has to come from somewhere. Yeah, so in terms of um, practices, uh, what does it mean to a practice for them to be able to offer patient finance? Well, what it means, Viv, is this is going to get them access to more physicians because especially if you're, picture your plastic surgeon or your, anything like that, you have 10 patients coming in the door, you know, probably two or three of those patients are not going to be able to afford the treatments that you're proposing to them. And so they need an alternative. And if you can get one or two of those patients approved for financing, that's one or two more patients that, um, you know, that, that are going to be customers of yours and that you're going to be able to, to realize that revenue. So let's look at this in terms of dollars and cents. What does that look like? Well, there's a couple of statistics I want to throw out to you, Viv, because I worked, as you may or may not know, I know you know Viv, but... I worked in the dental field for a while. So I went pharmaceutical to dental to ancillary. That's been my progression. And the what I found in dental, I didn't know anything about patient financing, but this is obviously in the dental world. This is used very frequently. In fact, every practice you go into is going to have patient financing options because they do a lot of cosmetic things. They do a lot of expensive procedures that are not generally covered by insurance or there's a large patient portion to be covered. And what I saw in every office was signs that said, we offer care credit. And what's funny, Viv, is that I was looking at my credit report recently, and I happened to see that all my old accounts, and I was looking, and I, I didn't even realize I had a care credit account about a decade ago. So I must have taken out a loan at some point. I don't even remember it. Um, I don't remember what I had done. <laughs> <But> <laughs> it must not have been worth it if I don't remember it. But at some point I had taken out like a, uh, some kind of loan or something from care credit or I was at least approved for financing. And I was... so with most, it doesn't mean I took the loan, but I was, I did have a um, uh, line of credit that was open through care credit. And when doctors are using something like care credit, they're leaving money on the table. The reason they use care credit, it's kind of like we talked about a medical waste. When you talk about medical waste, who do you think of? Stericycle. That's because this is the only thing you th they have 70 plus percent of the market. It's the same way in patient financing. Care Credit owns better than 80 percent of this market, but they have severe limitations. Number one, Care Credit only is, is a single lending source. So if the borrower does not meet their credit guidelines, it's a denial, and that's it. We can't fund them, and their approval rate is about 33 percent. Um, they also charge a loan discount to the practice of anywhere from 5 to 20%. On average, it's about 10%. So that that $5,000 uh, procedure that you're going to get done 
and you need to get financed, the doctor's only going to get reimbursed $4,500. So they're eating that cost right there. And you can see that the cost of this program gets very, very expensive. So you compare that with the credit link system, which is the one that we have been recommending. And we've used a handful of different programs. This one works pretty well. I like it because it's... Um, it has a lot of good things going for it, but number one is that they have a high approval rate, much, much higher. So to give you an idea, Credit Links is a platform with multiple lenders. There's 80 plus lenders on the platform and they all have their different criteria for underwriting. So if you put a patient in, they're getting a lot of chances to get approved. Now they do have their own, this isn't like everybody's gonna get approved, but their approval rate is around 60%. So you compare that to 33%, that means more dollars in the doctor's pocket. Not to mention, there is zero loan discount fees. So that $5,000 procedure, the doctor gets back $5,000, and they're going to get it almost twice as many, uh, almost twice as often. So that's a significant bump in revenue right there for the physician, plus a lot more patients able to get their procedures done. Because as you say, that's almost double what care credit is doing. And plus, they're not robbing the physician of a piece of their money that they're earning for doing the procedure. So how easy is it to get a patient signed up? Well, it's a, it's a piece of cake, Viv. So the doctor will be set up with their own portal when they sign up. And they'll use that portal, it's an online portal, and they'll use that portal to put in the patient information. So they do this right at the point of care. And so what will happen is the applicant will answer six questions. These are basic stuff that are going to be the pre-qualifying questions that if they answer yes to these, they're probably just kick them out right there. Like, have you declared bankruptcy? Do you have open judgments? Are you a U.S. citizen? As long as they pass that, then they will they'll they'll put in the rest of their information so that they can actually do a credit pull at that point and then the um, within 15 minutes but usually much much quicker they'll have a result which will show them the status whether they're approved or denied and it will show their options and it will and the applicant at that point can select which one they want to go with so they'll be able to see the terms and um, interest rates and everything and they just select which one they want and it's done it's it could be an installment loan it could be done through a line of credit a revolving line of credit there's different options that will be made available to the borrowers then right. the um they'll get to view their they'll get to actually see their credit score and view their credit report and um, this, this has absolutely no effect on their credit report, though. This is not a hard inquiry. This is a soft inquiry. So I know a lot of people who are looking at, they're concerned about their credit scores. That is a concern for them. So basically, they get to shop 80, 80 plus vendors with, with one uh, credit poll. And then from that point, once they're approved, they will get a call from the finance manager Within 15 minutes, the practice will get a call from the finance manager and discuss all the eligibility uh, options for the patient and, um, and, and let them know how they can proceed. And then they will reach out to the borrower and go over their options, send them the application. The, the patient will electronically sign it, and that's it. The money's funded. Right. Sounds as easy as ABC, right? <laughs> <laughs> it is it is pretty easy and if you're doing things especially if you have doctors who are are seeing patients who are paying cash for things and especially if you're promoting anything regenerative or aesthetic medicine if you have plastic surgery places even general surgery where the patient might have to pay five ten plus thousand dollars out of pocket um, surgery centers places like that those are also good targets but I, I, Viv, as I, as I look at this, this is just a no-brainer. Uh, compared to if you're with Care Credit now, this is an absolute no-brainer. So, is there any volumes or anything? So, like a lot of uh, typically it would have gone to like a lot of aesthetic type practices that are doing 
procedures for two to ten thousand dollars. But now, as you were saying before, with primary care practices possibly having uh, patients with higher deductibles and that, is there a minimum number of patients that they've got to sign up or minimum number of lo- loans or anything? There's no minimums. It's just, as a general rule, this really isn't worth doing unless you're going to do at least one per month, I would say. Right. Just because of the time it takes to get set up and everything. And not that it takes that much time, but um, if they're not using it or if they're, they're only using it once a year, chances are they're going to forget they even have it. So I, just as a sales marketing person i wouldn't bother to promote it from to that that guy who's going to send you know maybe one or two per year this as long as they're there's they have one or two patients a month that require financing i would say that's sufficient enough to to bring this up and what about the fees as it say what kind of fees are associated with it well that's the best part of this viv so again just to illustrate with care credit you're on average you're going to pay a 10 percent discount fee with this there's zero discount fees let me in fact viv let me back up a little bit i want to give you an illustration just because i had i had wrote this out the just taking a a practice with just one applicant per week to make this easy with an average loan size of five thousand dollars the with un, under care credit with their current underwriting guidelines they would get 17 patients per year approved. Now that's versus with credit links, 31 patients approved. Now with with um, with care credit, the total amount of finance would then be $85,000 on those 17 patients, but they're going to have an $8,500 discount fee, so they'll net out $76,500. Now you compare that to credit links, who would fund 31 loans with $155,000 in total financing, but zero fees. So they get they net $155,000. It's double the money, Viv. The only fee that the practice pays is a annual fee of $375. And the first $375 comes out of the first loan. So there's literally nothing out of pocket. And then they're charged annually on, their, on the anniversary of their first loan, that $375. The only other fee is a $75 applicant fee that goes to the borrower, but that application fee is only if they are accepted and they take the loan. If they're rejected, they don't have to pay it. And if they're accepted, but they choose not to take the loan, they also don't pay anything. Right, right. So who would your practice targets be for this particular program? Well, you can just use common sense on this and just think of who who would have a lot of patients who are paying out of pocket for something. So obviously, I think of anything aesthetic. Um, and the reason we brought this up, Viv, is because we've been getting a lot of phone calls about this recently. And the places I've gotten phone calls from, I had an addiction recovery center, a big one. A lot of that is out of pocket. I have another center here that does all that cool sculpting. We have a plastic surgery center. We have lots of places that do regenerative medicines of different types. So you might think like orthopedic, um, any kind of general surgery. And Viv, this is not something that I would say, you know, uh, patient financing is the only thing I'm going to promote and I'm going to go out there and close it. Now, if that were my goal, I could go around my area and I'm pretty confident I could go pick up 20 accounts. In, in just a couple months. But the problem is this, this doesn't pay huge money. This is your ticket into the bigger program. So this is more of a passive sale in terms of how I look at it. If you happen to see a sign up in the office that says we take care credit, that should be your cue at that point. If you don't see that sign, you really have nothing to discuss. It's, uh, it, it's, it's just not worth it to have that discussion. But, it, but to compare it to care credit and to show them the illustration that's what really drives it home. And that's this is a by the way sale. That's what we always call them, Viv. <laughs> the by the way sales. Hey, by the way, I know she got care credit up there. I wouldn't walk in talking about care credit, but no, she, you guys take care credit. How's that going for you? What do they charge you? Do you know that there's better options out there? A lot of people don't know this, but there, there are competitors to care credit that offer much lower fees and much higher approval rates. In fact, you you can make about twice as much money going with a competitor, and then just show them the illustration of this is what this is their approval rate. This is Credit Link's approval rate. This is how much they charge. This is how much Credit Link's charge. And once you stack them up, Viv, there's just no comparison. 
Well, that's what I love, Mike. You always have the cut it to the chase uh, sales pitch and the way you – the way you position that is just always like you'd be mad not to do it. <laughs> well, yeah, but you know, Viv, you you know what we always say, the, the thing that you're going to be the most successful selling are the things that you believe in. And if you look at this side by side, there's no way that you wouldn't be sold on this yourself. And if you can see that there's a clear benefit over care credit, that's going to come through when you're speaking to your physicians and, and practice managers. They're going to, I mean, they're, they're going to see that too as long as you have the enthusiasm for it. Absolutely, absolutely. If you are interested in participating in this, you can sign up as a direct distributor. Just get in touch with Viv and I, and we can get you a, um, a contract, reseller contract, and you can promote this directly for credit links. So Viv, thanks, thanks, thanks for Mike. the interview. <laughs> thanks. Uh. Just when I see.